because even as a child, I was very um, sensitive and in tune to spiritual things. And, mm-hmm. and when I say that he took it away from me, because originally I didn't want to get rid of because that's my baggage. And sometimes your baggage becomes your comfort point. It's a point where you can put up guards and barriers against other people, not allowing them into your life or using it as an excuse of why you act the way you do, or uh, you know, because I would have um, different spells when I would just go off, you know, and then people were like, oh, she's crazy. And it's not that I was crazy, it was that I was packing a lot of pain. Hey, family, I'm Tarasha Adair, and you are doing life with Lakeisha Woodard on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you are here. I do not take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, <laughs> purpose-driven life. So today's conversation is very much needed based on all the protests across the world in response to George Floyd's murder. It's also a conversation I recognize and understand that no one is really thinking about having right now. And since this platform is all about having the hard conversations, we're going to do just that. Today, we're talking about forgiveness. And I must let you know that this conversation was pre-planned just based off of last month's conversations around mental illness, and trauma. It would do you a disservice to talk about those topics and not bring up forgiveness. So with that being said, I had no idea that we would be in the middle of protesting in a pandemic when my lineup was scheduled. So I pray you join this conversation with an open heart and an open mind and apply what we're talking about to your healing process for witnessing George Floyd's murder. Yes, I said it. If you watch that video, you have experienced a trauma. And in order to have a faith-based conversation about forgiveness to heal from trauma, I'm sitting down with my sister friend, Tarasha Adair. Hey, Tarasha girl. Thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lakeisha. I really appreciate it. Um, Just the opportunity to be on Living Her Truth podcast. Thank you so much. (laughs) So welcome. I am super excited to to have you on on the podcast. And what we're going to talk about today is going to be so right on time, especially having the conversations on mental health awareness that we had last month. So this conversation is definitely going to be needed. So yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Just praying that it lands on somebody in the right way. That's what we oh do. yes, me too. On. <laughs> in the right way. That's important, okay? In the right way. Absolutely. So I love to start every conversation out with just talking about how I've come to know um, the person that I'm having a conversation with. And so this episode is no different. So you guys, Taraja and I met at a women's <laughs> at a women's conference, um, hosted by Christina Me, another girl success. Ooh. Yeah, um, platforms. Shout out to Christina <laughs> for shout out Christina <laughs> for helping us to make this connection. And Yay. so I was at the conference, and you were selling your book. Yes, I was. Our author, you know, your children's um, book author. She was selling yes. her book, and we talked, and we just like clicked. Click, yes. Like, oh, friends, right? Ooh, yes. Oh, I remember that like yesterday. I really do. Yeah, it was just like we just clicked and we was old friends. And I did purchase her. I did purchase her book and sent it to my niece and my thank niece. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. 
Yeah, she actually loved the book. So um, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I wanted to bring Tarasha here on the podcast so we could talk about forgiveness, guys. She yes. is the forgiveness expert. Um, you know, at the time that we are having this conversation, we're in COVID times. So I, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. praying, even in God, that by the time you are listening to this episode, that we have gotten past COVID yes. time. So with, with COVID, you know, going on and, and perfectly uh, in the past and then after all of the conversations we had um, during Mental Health Awareness Month, forgiveness is something that's definitely needed. And forgiveness yes, it is, is. We definitely need to. We need to practice. And so we're going to talk about it all today. We're going to have that hard conversation about forgiveness because I think it's something that a lot of people are not willing to do. Right. And we're going to like shut down some of the the myths and misconceptions about forgiveness because you guys, if you know my story, right? If you heard me <laughs> at any length of time, you know my story on how I transitioned from victim to survivor of sexual abuse. Mm. Forgiveness was a big part of that. Okay. Forgiveness was a big part of that. Yes, yes, yes. My mom, I forgave her husband, and I also yes, forgave myself. Yes. In order to get to the point where I am today, where I'm able to embrace and operate in purpose, forgiveness is so key. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it on today. And so for for someone to, Taraja, for somebody to like just talk about forgiveness like that, for that to be their their platform, something had to happen. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's more than something, okay? There were some some things that happened, you know. That happened? So do you mind telling us about those things? Some of the things that I, you know, in honor of where I am right now, I will not do a lot of, you know, name calling and things of that sure. nature, but I will talk about uh, specifically because a lot of things take root um, in our childhood. And I believe that it is an, um, an attack of the enemy to prevent us from truly walking in who God created us to be. And so when we become adults, we are carrying all of this, this junk, this baggage from our um, childhood into our adulthood and still we're struggling. We're like adult children struggling with all these different issues because we um, in, incurred a lot of childhood wounds, okay? And so um, one of those things um, have to do with the injuries that could cause unforgiveness. And so in my life, I personally dealt with in my house with the um, situation of unforgiveness with one of my parents because of things that happened and um, I was in a very angry place and and no I wasn't molested and stuff but um, when you're in a situation where you are belittled a lot and your value is um, minimized and you're already struggling and trying to find your identity and your purpose in life and you're hearing the voice of God at the same time because you're raised up in the church it's like all this stuff is confusing and, and then you're not really hearing a lot of people talk about forgiveness. And so unforgiveness takes root in your heart because of all the injuries that you incur. And so you're bitter towards a person when at that time, because you were a child, you're thinking like a child, you don't realize that they also incurred some injuries when they were younger And they have brought it into their adulthood. And so they are parenting you from a place where they were injured. And so um, they only did the best that they could. But at that time, you didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. And so I just know you hurt me. You deeply injured me. Because let me tell you something. Inner wounds can be more, more painful than physical wounds. They really can. Um, And so... I remember going to, when I was 16 years old, going to a uh, revival or some kind of church event with, with a friend of mine. And I was sitting way in the back, you know, teenage being teenagers playing around and stuff. And then the man of God, the preacher, um, pointed to me, called me out, and he said, God really wants to use you, but he will not be able to use you to the extent that he wants to until you forgive that person who hurt you. Mm. And and I'm like, ooh, just call me out, you know, reading all my mail. I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And at that moment, 
the Holy Spirit brought to my mind all the things that I had, all the injuries that the that that particular person had caused me, and 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 I had to let it go. And let me tell you, Keisha, it was not easy because I at that time I did not want to forgive that person because I'm like this person has done so much to me I was just going down the list of all the things that that person had done to me and I had carried all of that 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 person had done you know all of that time from from being a little girl on coming on up into my um, teenage years and even after that because even after that church service was over I didn't totally get delivered at that time. You know, it was literally a process, but I did have to have a real conversation with God. And I just basically just told him the truth. Look, I don't want to forgive. And if you want me to forgive, because I know your word says, um, if I don't forgive, then I won't. I mean, if I don't forgive, then you won't forgive me either. And I don't want you to not forgive me. And I want to be right with you. So I'm going to need you to take this from me because I can't do it by myself. And that was a real moment for me because even as a child, I was very um, sensitive and in tune to spiritual things. And, mm -hmm. and when I say that he took it away from me because originally I didn't want to get rid of because that's my baggage. And sometimes your baggage becomes your comfort point. It's a point where you can put up guards and barriers against other people, not allowing them into your life or using it as an excuse of why you act the way you do, or uh, you know, because I would have... Um, different spells when I would just go off, you know, and then people were like, oh, she crazy. And it's not that I was crazy, it was that I was packing a lot of pain that mm -hmm. I didn't know how to deal with on my own. And so at moments that it would seep out and that's what it would look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I... Man, Man. <laughs> thank you for, you know, thank you for, for sharing, for sharing all that. Hopefully yes. by now, people who have been rocking with me for, for this long on, on the podcast, hopefully they have, you know, uh, understood the message of if, if you wasn't molested, then that doesn't mean that you haven't experienced a traumatic, you know, right, right, right. Experience. Because I love the fact that you pointed out that I wasn't molested, but I was belittled and I lived in an angry household. That's a traumatic experience, right? And that was, and that was in that particular situation because I do have a testimony of being molested, but that's a whole different because there was somebody else, you know. Yeah. Um, but that particularly that was pointed out to me um, at that church service was something that was even more deeply rooted than than being molested. Wow. Wow. But yeah, but because so it was rooted in, in my identity and who I was and who I was hearing, you know, and when I was hearing God telling me, I've called you to do this, but yet this person is telling me I'm all these negative things and I can't do this and I can't do that. Then I'm, I'm confused mm. and I'm angry because on the inside, I really feel that I'm supposed to be doing this and I'm called to be this and and, and then I get cut down mm -hmm. and so then I struggle because I'm I, I, and I start living my life for people as long as I make other people happy then then I'm happy but really I'm not if you know what I mean oh yeah I know exactly I know exactly what you mean you know I talk yeah. about living a purpose-driven life as opposed to a perception-driven life all the time and that right. was a, a perception driven life but you know I, I don't want people to get caught up in the fact that oh she went through this so because I didn't go through that I don't have a traumatic experience yeah exactly all that is, you know are you know are different in some way so just because That's right you have an experience exactly what we have gone through that doesn't mean that you haven't you know had an, a traumatic experience that maybe that you need to um just practice forgiveness in order for it to be release because because right. you, like those inner wounds can hurt worse than the actual physical wounds because they say you know there's there's life and death in the power of the tongue yes the yes cut you all the way up Ooh. right and it will cut you up worse than somebody smacking you across your face you are rather take because this Right. You would rather take the punch in the eye than for somebody to just like belittle you. Yeah, right? just, just cut up your 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 confidence, you know. Play mind games with you. Absolutely. That's why they say that, you know, an idle mind is is the devil's playground. Like that is 
that is real and it is it's real 100 percent real and i love the fact that you said that forgiveness takes root in 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 your heart you know um i had a a a book club this Mm. year and so in the book club it was my my way of helping us to have a mindset reset right especially that's good that's good during COVID times, right? We need to have yes. a to prepare for what's to come after COVID and to right. and to be able to handle like what's going on while we're in the midst of it. And so in yes. my my spiritual study, I realized that, you know, okay, Keisha, you 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 scratching the surface. We're getting people hmm. to mindset their reset, but you need to take it a step further. And oh, come on now further is helping people to do a heart check. Ooh, because yes it has to be pure because when your heart is tainted it comes out oh. words your emotions your thoughts, your actions so the fact yes, that you it does you know that that unforgiveness is rooted in your in your heart that's why you was angry and snapping off on people that's why that's it, it showed up in the negative way that it showed up yes 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 rooted in, in, in your heart so we have to do a heart check we got and when to do we, a heart check Yes, and when we sit there, some impureness in our heart, whatever that, whatever that, whatever it is, right? right, Whatever that may be, you know, it could be jealousy, it could be gluttony. Oh, come on now, let's get real now. It could be anything, whatever. Any number of issues, yes. We need to, we need to get it out of there and deal with it, so that everything we do is in alignment with purpose and ultimately gives God the glory. Amen. It starts. It starts with our heart, and Ooh, I, that's good. And I, and I love the fact that you share too that you went to this this revival. You set it back, you know, because that's what what teenagers do, <laughs> right? Wow, well, that's you guys. That's God saying, "I'm going to meet you where you are." Ooh, come on now. Ooh, that's God saying, "My purpose is going to it's going to move forward regardless if you try to hide." Come on now or whatever mm. forward. so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna come get you god will I'm gonna come get you i'm gonna re- i'm gonna reach you out there in the back yes yes god will meet you halfway taraja's halfway was going to the event and showing up so god met her <laughs> and this didn't even know what i was showing up for you know yes Ooh. We just gotta- but god hears our inner cries Ooh. say that again I said, but God, he hears our inner cries. Yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. And he also looks at our hearts. Yes, he, he does. He doesn't just look at our, our, our actions and this facade and mask that we no, put on. No, no, no. He looks at our hearts. It's, it's, the, it's the condition of our hearts. That's what he yes. looks at. You know, so that's why we need to focus on on our hearts and, and get the, the, those purities up, up out yes. of our hearts. Yes, yes, you know? yes. You know, yeah. so... You know, Taraja, so how does how does all of that that we just talked about, forgiveness and all of that, like how is that important to having self-awareness? Or is that even important for having Oh, it, it is important because being a self-awareness is being able to see yourself, see where you are, see your condition, and 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 be real about it. That's self-awareness, okay? Um, it, you, you can look at it from a positive standpoint, looking at the positive things, you know, about yourself, but you also have to look at those things that are destroying your life too. That, because when you talk about self-awareness, you have to look at the total being. Okay. And so, um, dealing with forgiveness, when we talk about forgiveness, that's so important to self-awareness because number one, if you're going to ever get from a place of being healed, being delivered from unforgiveness, you first have to be aware that it's there. Mm. And then you have to call it out for what it is, okay? That's unforgiveness, mm-hmm. you know? So I got to deal with that. I do not, um, every time I'm around, like for example, every time I'm around this person, I, I just start feeling awkward. I start feeling angry. I, my heart start doing this little mm, thing where I just, you know, I can't stand this person. And, and, and a lot of times people are like, I just can't stand this person because they just did this. No, when you look at the root cause of it, it's unforgiveness. 
And that's a part of self-awareness to be able to see yourself where you are, to be able to see what exactly is in you and to call it out for what it is. Absolutely. I know specifically we're talking about unforgiveness, but like you mentioned about those other things, that could be other things too. Jealousy, pride, mm -hmm. disobedience, you know, all of those different things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and oh my God, yes, Tarasha. And then also too, like, self-awareness is two-pronged is yes. being able to see you for who you truly are and it's yes, yes, a part of how others see you and yes. it doesn't have to be in a in a negative contradictory way you guys right right what it is that you're going through some things you're just not able to see and it doesn't yes. even have to be and it doesn't even have to be just the bad things like some people can probably you know tell you you know if they see ugliness Air right, 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 right. Ugliness is in you. But there's a positive mm. side to that too. Because sometimes we don't know what our gifts are. We have many Come on now. skills and gifts, right? But because of all many. of the things and experiences that we have gone through, you know, some of us were operating in gifts and we don't even see them as gifts. Come on like now. Somebody comes to us and say, girl, that's a gift. Girl, you got to for that. Girl, I need you, you to believe it. Girl, you was able to deliver this from me. Girl, this is so easy. You, able, you know? So it's also yes. people telling us, you know, what it is that, that we are naturally doing that we don't yes. even recognize or even consider a gift because it's right. not a popular or sexy thing to do and have in these social media. Oh, come on. Social media. Shows. Yes. Oh, come know? on, girl. That's good. I, that's one of that the is good. Why I, I, that's one of the reasons why I, I had this podcast, you know, because the podcast, wow. if you listen to the very first episode, you already know this, but just in case you just yes. find me, Living Her Truth started off as a interview series in August of 2018. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, I went to brunch with some women and I said I had this idea. I reached out to some real popular YouTubers. Cause I wanted to see mm. if they would let me interview them. I never got any response. So it was like mm. dead in the water. And so fast forward to almost a year later, I'm at brunch with these women and I tell them this story and they just, and I tell them my idea behind it. And they're like, Oh, you need to do that. As a matter of fact, we're going to be mm. the first two people that you interview. And I'm Ooh, like, look at oh, there. Okay. So you would, you, so you would think that I walked away from that brunch taking action. No, I didn't. I still oh, said, my. And then I get to <laughs> um, Keisha. I thought you said. Then I, I was like, "Oh, okay. I see. Okay, yeah. Accountability, accountability. Oh, keep me accountable. So August, four weeks. I figured, you know, let me do an interview every Monday. I already have two people. Let me reach out to two more people, round it out for the month. Next thing you know, somebody eases in my DM was like, "Can you interview me in September?" Wow. And so I did it in September, and then next thing you know, I had interview set up for October. A family that is so awesome. Happened, and then I was, um, and then I put it on hold, and I didn't go back to it because I needed to to be with family in that time. But yeah, even yeah, yeah. Short time frame. I was having interviews with women, and they was telling me, mm. Girl, "It's so easy to talk to you." Oh like, my, that's you, beautiful. You things up out of me that, that I is beautiful to share, you know. And so that wow. was that was that was a gift that I didn't even know that that I that I had. And then next, but you do podcast, podcast, podcast. I'm like, let me give the people what they want, and then this is the podcast. But this is me. She got the audience for yeah. it. awesome. Exactly. But this is me operating in purpose. This is me, you know, yes. uh, forgiving those who, who hurt yes. me. Yes, I could get to a point where I could operate in purpose. And then while operating in purpose, come across the people that were able to see gifts that I didn't even know was there. Oh, I love it. I love it. You guys, you see how that's wow. circle? Hopefully that came. Hopefully that was a, a full circle moment. That was a full circle. That was a full circle moment. I, I Look, I'll chime in and say that was a full circle moment. I love that. Woo. And thank you for giving us the history, okay? I need to go back and look at that first um, podcast. Yeah, 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 check out the first episode because I break it, I break it yes. off. So, Taraj, wow. what is the first step to true forgiveness? What is that first step the, you need to take? The first step is 
for true forgiveness is just asking, not asking, but um, well, really asking, asking to be healed from that because you already recognize that it's there, but then it's like, I don't want to keep this because you know, we can choose to let go or we could choose to hold on. We have a choice. Okay. And so I believe the first step is that you have to choose to be made whole. Mm. Jesus asked the invalid that was laying by the pool of Bethesda. He said, will you be made whole? The man gave him a lot of reasons of why he could be made whole because of his situation. You know, when they had the pool at certain seasons, um, the angels will come and stir up the water. And then the first person in the pool would be healed. Uh, and him being an invalid, not being able to move, and he relying on somebody else to be able to carry him and hurry up and get him there. He was like, I, I, I can't be made whole because of these reasons. But God asked him a simple, Jesus asked him a simple question, will you be made whole? Yeah, I know you experienced all of this, and I know you went through all of that. I know you, um, you, you have all these excuses, and they are valid, valid excuses, but will you? be made whole hmm. so it's, it's a choice yes I will be made whole because you know what when you say yes I'm, I'm willing to be made whole you are also put on the spot to say now that I'm made whole now I can no longer hold on to the excuses or a uh, function in the way I used to function um, because I use my hurt as um, an excuse of why I'm not moving forward in life or why you know why this or why that now I have to go forward and do something. I have to move forward and walk in my purpose. And so um, I, I just feel like I need to address the issue right now that some people don't want to be made whole. Mm -hmm. They like living in that place of hurt. Mm -hmm. And like right now, my heart is hurting because you don't have to live like that. Yeah. That's a place called wholeness, a place of deliverance a place of freedom that is much better than where you are. And, and when you get to that place of freedom, of healing, of being delivered, you're free to do and be who you've been created to be. Mm -hmm. And so when you recognize you have unforgiveness, it's addressing it and making a choice. I will forgive. Like in my situation in, in, that I shared, that one particular situation, I, I confess that I did not want to. Mm -hmm. forgive mm -hmm. but yet I was willing to admit that I wanted to be in favor with God and do it his way so I asked him Lord will you take this away from me so in that sense I was willing because on my own I didn't know how to forgive because I had held on to that hurt for so long and it was years and years of injury so it was just stacks upon stacks stacks and stacks upon stacks of hurt okay Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, that's my take on that. I love that because you guys, God is so amazing. He's such a gracious God that he has yes. given us free will. Everything starts with a choice. Everything. Everything starts with a choice. You even yeah. have, you even have the choice to whether or not you're going to follow him or not. That's your choice. Yeah. That's your that's choice. choice. But even if you decide not to and come back 20 years later and say, yes, I do want to follow you, he's going to be right there. Right it, there, hands. It's extended all, to you, arms wide open. Yes. <laughs> it all starts with the choice because we have the yes. free will to do so. And we that's free will. We have free will. We have free will. And that's the most powerful thing, probably one of the most powerful tools that God has, has given us. Yes. That's yes. Free will. And free will. And the choice, you know, because if you guys think about it, Jesus never like hounded anybody to follow him. Never, 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 never. never. If you didn't want to follow him. No. Okay. Okay. That's your choice. That was your choice to do that. Right. So, yes. so you, right. You, you have the choice to, to forgive. You have the choice to be whole. You have the choice on whether or not you're going to be happy. Yes. You have that choice. And, and, and you guys, Please know that this is possibly for some of you a choice that you're gonna to have to make every day. Yes. This every day. Choice that you're gonna to have to make every single day. Now I'm not saying 
to choose happiness in in the in the midst of you know um staying in a an abusive relationship you're in a right 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 no that's not what we're saying I'm, I'm, I'm gonna choose to be happy even though you know he's beat me to a pope every day that's not what no I'm, that's not what i'm saying no at all. not at all Mm-mm. choose to be happy by saying okay what am i going to do to get up out of this situation yes be happy by saying you know who 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 can help me with this mental illness because we talked about yes illness. Right. Who can help me? Who can support yes. me in this? Right. That's what we mean by making it because you make the choice and then you have to take action. Because like when she talked about the implant next to the pool, he had to get up. He had to get up. He yes. And he had to he get up. Action. Yes. Yes. Once he made that choice, I will be bay ho. He had to get up. He had to get up. He had to take action. So it's making a choice and then you have to follow up with action yeah. and, that's, and that's another great example of of what the word says that you know faith without works is dead faith is dead works is dead it's dead you have to do it's your dead. part you've got mm-hmm. to do your part and then do your part that's good yeah 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 so what's the so that's what's a, a misconception about forgiveness that you can clear up for us today a misconception about uh, forgiveness is that when you forgive, you also forget. You know how people like to put the words forgive and forget together? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You don't, you, I'm going to say you're not going to forget. And you don't have to forget. Mm-hmm. Because when you, you should have something that you can look back on and say, this is what God brought me through. Mm-hmm. And it used to hurt me but now I don't hurt no more. I can look back and say how I got over. Mm -hmm. And because I got over, you can get over too. Mm -hmm. And so I remember how it was because it keeps me in a place of being sensitive when I am, um, when I meet other people who are going through similar situations like I did, who I'm called to minister to, because sometimes if we forget, then we lose our sensitivity when we're dealing with other people. And so I say the misconception is that people talk about forgive and forget. No, you you don't have to forget. And Mm -hmm. and nine out of 10 times, you're not going to forget. But but when you look back on that situation that caused you to, you know, have unforgiveness um, planted in your heart, it shouldn't hurt. You shouldn't want to do anything to that person, anything negative. If anything, you should be in a place where you're like praying for that person if that person still isn't delivered. Like, because I'm loved, I love you because you know what? I have to forgive you because you don't, you don't know what you're doing. You don't realize that you're in that condition. You don't realize that you're a pig wilding in the mud. You think you're clean and you're not. Um, you don't realize that the way you grew up um, um, has influenced you and um and how you treated me in this relationship so i say forgive and remember Mm -hmm. forgive and remember because then i can look back on something and say look god got me over this and if he did it for me he could do it for you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely that was a good misconception to to bring up and you know you guys just because you don't forget just because you forgive and remember doesn't doesn't um take away the validity of your forgiveness right just, right just you 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 don't forget it doesn't take away the validity of your healing either because that's it, I, that's it. because i too say that all the time that it's our amnesia that keep us stuck in front of a mountain because yeah the 20 mountains behind us that god has helped us to get over come on forgot when we come in front of that next mountain we forget that god is going to take us over that mountain as well come on we have to do is take a step and just take action yes it's okay to to remember it's okay to remember because sometimes okay it is okay you have to go back and remember and and pull strength from that 
Yes. What's in front of us? Because let me tell you something. When you operate in purpose, things are not going to get easier. They're not. Okay. You know, it's not going to get. I'm easier. a witness. Like, like the target on your back is going to get bigger, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. The devil's like that's that's real talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. So your mountains may get bigger, bigger, and bigger, but that doesn't mean they cannot be defeated. Think about David and Goliath. Goliath was a giant. Mm, and he was a boy. He was defeated. So just because your Ooh. mountains are getting bigger because of the more you walking in purpose doesn't mean that you yes. can't go on that mountain. You just have to remember what now. God already brought you through. Oh, that's why God talks so many times in the word, lest you forget. Lest you forget, lest you forget. <laughs> That's why so many times he had to deal with the Israelites because they would forget. And unless they had to go through something, God had to bring judgment, they didn't remember. And all these good things that he had done for them, all of these good things he had brought, you know, how he had been faithful and brought them through, they would forget. Mm -hmm. And then it would take something hard to uh, allow them to remember. But you don't have to go through that. Let's just keep, let's keep the memory before us. Let's honor the memory of how God got us over. Exactly. And also let us keep the memory too. So when we are facing that same thing again, we don't go back to our old ways. No. Now, now we and go we can stand of faith. Yes. You know? Oh my goodness. Woo. <laughs> That was a that was a that was a good misconception to to bring up. That. that was a good one. Hopefully that has released somebody on today. But if it hasn't, I hope so. I pray so. And if it hasn't, we need to talk a little further. Then that's okay. Then click the link that's in the show notes, LakeishaWood.com forward slash coaching, so we can like talk it out and, and really. I love it. I love it. Dig deeper into that. So yes. you so you can experience that freedom that Tarasha talked about earlier. Because let Come me tell you. When I forgave my mom, her husband, and myself, it was like a weight had literally been lifted. Ooh. It was like a weight had been lifted. Yes. I, I no longer had that baggage like you talked about. No. To carry anymore. It was no longer mine. It was no felt longer mine. Ooh. It just felt good to, to, to just yes. like. Yes. And that's what forgiveness gives you. It gives you that uh -huh. ring, but you have to make the choice. You have to make the choice. You you go to back to choice. Boils down to the choice you'll make. And you have to take the action. You have to take the action. Choose you this day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What you're going to choose? Life or death? What you're going to choose? Life or death? What you're going to choose? And just, in case, and just in case you're thinking, okay, Keisha, choice, I get it, but what action do I take to to pray for the person that that wronged you like taraja said that's taking action yes yes, yes. that's taking action that's taking action praying for them you know that's taking action you know going to god and asking god to you know to to release you and help you with it that's yes you that's you taking action that's you yes taking yes action. yes oh that's good that's good you know on your on your submission form taraja you said and I know this is going to be good. On your submission form, you, you, you stated that your faith has caused you to move in ways that has caused people to question, to talk about, to doubt, and to downgrade you. But through it all, you continue to walk by faith. Girl, oh, man. girl, tell us. Hey. How. Because there girl, are let me tell right you. Experiencing that right now. How? Talk yeah. to me. Let me, let me just tell you what this is, because we're going to go in a little bit different direction, because this has to do with me walking in my purpose, going to um, the it's next, right season. okay, it's going to the next season of my life, because understand when God promotes you, you're not always going to stay in the old place. He will call you to a new land like he did with Abraham. And so, and I tell you just a quick backstory is that God told me to teach. I have my mind on other things and I'm right now uh, writing the book that will come out um, later. I won't give you the title, but okay. I want you to look out for it because I am writing this about my journey and how God made me into the servant he wanted me to be. And that was a hard process. And he used me teaching to teach me how to do that. 
And so when he called me to teach, he told me from the beginning, you will not retire as a teacher. Eventually you'll be doing ministry full time. And so I understood that when I went into teaching that at some point he will call me out, that I was not going to retire as a teacher. And then on top of that, God told me to go back to my home town, which I did not want to go back to because for me, my hometown was a place where even though I had a lot of great accomplishment, it was also a place, a lot of great hurts. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to go back there because if I went back there, I would look like a failure because what you're doing back here when you were supposed to be there, come on, let's be real. And so after 14 years of being in the classroom, God had called me out of the classroom to go into the new thing, to do ministry and business full time. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people question that. Why are you doing that? That doesn't even make any sense. And then on top of that, while I'm transitioning in this new thing, God tells me to sub, be a substitute teacher in the process. And the reason he told me to do that, and I look, I got I got my little ebooks on that too, so I won't reveal everything. Okay, you're gonna have to go get the ebook All once right. I finish. All but right. um he um let me get back on track. And so in that process of him calling me out, people people question that. That's like, you crazy. Why would you leave a full-time job to go into the unknown? Why would you um, put your family in this, uh, this particular situation? Why would you go be a substitute teacher when you, when you have the credentials to teach full-time? Why, why, why? And then in that process, as I was walking through, a lot of people didn't encourage me. Mm. And these were people that I had known for a while. I mean, people in the church, people outside the church, people uh, in the school where I had taught with for the whole 14 years. You know, you think they would applaud you that you, you're mm. living your, they knew I was a woman of faith from the beginning. And even in your own household, you know, there are doubts. And so you are literally in a place where you're standing with God by yourself with him. Okay. Holding on to the word that he gave you and refusing to let go because you know what God told you. And because it wasn't where all of a sudden I just was, I'm calling you out the classroom. I knew from the beginning. And then God dealt with me all along the way. He was preparing me. There were seasons when, and when I had to go on fast. Mm. I remember one time uh, when I was teaching full time, God told me going to 40 Wednesdays fast. And so for 40 Wednesdays, I was fasting. And then there were other seasons of fasting. There would be situations and times when he would call me to give things away. Things that, because he was taking stuff out of my heart. Because in order to be a, a true servant of his, you can't be attached to anything. And you can't be attached to anyone as far as he must be number one mm -hmm. above all else. His will must prevail in your life. Mm -hmm. And you must pursue it. Mm -hmm. And so... In spite of that, here I am. I came out in 2017, okay? Mm -hmm. I finished that school year. Um, and God, a lot of people get called into the new thing by getting fired. But I had to write a letter of resignation. Mm -hmm. How about some faith? Exercising some faith. And yeah. then not only that, but, but uh, my administrators lost my first letter of um, resignation. So I had to resubmit it. <laughs> I got jokes. <laughs> and so talk about faith because if any time was the right time for me to say, you know what, I changed my mind, I'm gonna stay right here. That was the opportunity, but I, I knew jokes. what God had called. What you say? I got jokes. He got jokes. And so I was like, okay, look at this. And so, anyways, I resubmitted it and I left that old life behind not that i didn't enjoy being there but sometimes god will cause you to become uncomfortable or he will cause some um some static just to make sure look it's time for you to go i need you to understand that it's time for you to go and this situation is not going to get better so i'm giving you the opportunity to go on a good note on a good foot or else you're gonna cause me to have to just take you from this and because mm -hmm. I had already gone through a number of lessons with him, I was like, I don't want him to have to just cut me off and, and you know, just take the job from me. So I'm going to go when he tells me to go. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so, um, and that is a whole story in itself. And I, you know, I will share all the details in my book um, that will be coming out, you know, between the end of this year and early next year, whenever God's purpose for it to come out. But I am in the process of writing that right now and excited about telling the story because now is the time to tell the story because this is the season for the entrepreneur, especially people of faith, because a lot of times we think everything has to be done inside of the church, but God is calling um, people outside of the church to be a witness in the world mm-hmm. and in, in different spheres of influence. Mm-hmm. Because if other people are ruling and reigning out there in the other spheres of influence and we just in the church, how are other people, how is God being glorified in those other uh, spheres of influence? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he is calling some of us out to do a new thing in a new place. And so that's what that whole when I wrote that, that's what that's all about. And, and baby, I'm still standing. I've had some ups and I've had some downs. But when I say I know that I'm where I'm supposed to be at this moment in my life, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And I will not quit because what God promised me in the old season, it shall be. It is so. Mm-hmm. Because he watches over his words to perform it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to mm-hmm. start preaching in a few minutes. But <laughs> look. Mm-hmm. And so God, God will bring you to a place where you have to walk with him by yourself. Your husband can't go with you. Your children can't go with you. Your friend can't go with you. You have to walk it out by yourself with God. Because I don't ever want you to think that you're alone because you're not alone. He's with you. God has promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. But to get into a place where you're like this with God. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that. It was so many gems and you sharing your experience. And I just want to point some of them out. You know, you say you said that, you know, God kept you in, you was in the classroom for 14 years before he pulled you out. You know, a lot of us, we we lack patience. We oh, want yes. to happen immediately and overnight. <laughs> it, it may take you 14 years. It, it might take you 14 years. It may, you know. Uh, for me, it took 10. You know, for yes. you, it, it could take you six months, you know. But yes. the, the point of the matter is, is that you have to be steadfast and you have to be patient. And then when yes. he t- move, you have to move. You have to move in his time and in sync with him. You have to move. You God. have to. You have to. You have to move, and and another thing too that I want that I want to that I want to point out is that not everybody's going to understand what it is that you're doing. They are not going to understand, and and you know what? And it's not their place to understand. It's not because God spoke to you. Absolutely. So people are going to question. You're going to look crazy too. You're going to look crazy. Family. You're going to look crazy for a season. Purpose sets you apart. Purpose sets you apart. Purpose so sets know, you apart. That's good. So I know a lot of people battle with with embracing purpose because of the yes. sadness. Because they've been alone. They've been rejected. Mm, for so yes. Long. All they want to do is to feel love and accepted. But I'm telling yes. you, right now, today, you are already loved. You are already you're accepted. Already. The fact that God already loved you is proof that you are already loved, validated, and accepted. Chase your yes, purpose. Yes, indeed. Chase your purpose. If that means you have to be Chase your purpose for a season, then that's okay. Because that means that mm. the God is the side so he can do a work in you. So he can Come show you. now. It is absolutely okay. So, okay. If, so, so don't be okay. to take action and fail because people are going to always have something to say. You always. Know, I, I listen to Lisa Nichols. I'm a huge Lisa Nichols fan. Yes. Her grandmother says, you know, uh, give people something to talk about, right? Ooh. This is a Rachel story. So give people something to, to talk about. I love it. I'm give people something you, to talk about. People are going to always have something to say. So give them always. something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk yeah. about. <laughs> you, how you went off looking crazy, fell, but God picked you up and glorified you. Hey. And bless you. Give them something to talk Ooh. about. Give them something to talk yeah. about. But it's going to take you taking action and being brave enough, making a choice. 
Yes. To lean on your faith and have the patience to do so. And yes. when he say move, guys, it's not going to be move. It's not going to be easy. Please know that it is not going to be easy. But let me tell you, it is doable. It's doable. You can't do it. It's you doable. Will, you will do it. If you, if you put your faith yeah. in God, you will do it. Because That's the plan it. has already been laid out. It's already been laid the out. It's waiting for you as you move. As you move, the provision that you need, it, it will be there. Yep. It's right there. But are you are you gonna are you gonna trust and are you gonna be obedient? Mm -hmm. That's are it to obedience. Ooh, right. obedience. You know, obedience is my word for the year for this year. Girl, yes, obedience. for you know what? That's the word that is the word of the season. I've been um just listening to a number of people, you know, in the prophetic and just people in of faith and, and obedience is one of the things, one of the words that keeps coming up. It is so important, so vital in this season that we obey God, we obey his word and we obey his instructions for our lives. And when you do that, let me tell you, you will live, mm -hmm. you will thrive, you will survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obey, obey, and I'm not just talking to you. I'm, I'm look as I talk to you. I'm talking to myself too, because um, you know, obedience is always before you can go a season obeying and then you disobeying. You know, so this is a daily walk. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm it's a daily walk. obey. Mhm. Mm absolutely, it's absolutely a daily walk. Tarasha, I have enjoyed you, my sister. I knew this was. I've enjoyed you. I knew this is gonna be a, a a good conversation, but it has totally like <laughs> went above my expectations for real. <laughs> yeah, yay! Woo! It was good. It was. It was good. But before I let you go, I want you to give us one book or audible recommendation that has impacted your life. Besides, look, besides the Bible, because the Bible is always in time and in season. Yes. I read a book. When I was, you know, coming out of this thing, going into entrepreneurship, because I'm the type of person, I was like, God, I'm listening, but is this really you? Because I want to make sure that it's him that's telling me what to do, you know? And so I'm not hesitating out of disobedience. I'm hesitating because I really want to make sure that this is your will. And so God led me to read a book called Create. Ah. Just simply create, and the author is Jordan Raynor. That's R A Y N O R N O R. I had never heard of him before, but God had allowed me to come across this resource. And I read that book and I was like, it is describing, it is describing everything that I'm feeling, everything that I'm sensing right now, how I was born to create. I was born and called out to do something more. I've always been called to be an entrepreneur. And I, even when I was a child, God took me back to my childhood when, when I was like, I'll be a businesswoman when I grow. I didn't know what business I was going to have, but it, in, in my mind, I was like, I'm be a businesswoman. So even then I was speaking it, even though I didn't know how I was going to walk it out. And so in this particular season, um, I'm walking it out now, but he allowed me to read that book to let me know, look, you're not crazy. These are not your own thoughts that you're having in your head. I have called you to create. I have called you to be an entrepreneur for such a time as this. And many will be blessed if you obey me. I had and to so check. I said, yeah, what I, you had say? To, I had to check my audible library. I've read that. I listened to that book too. You did? It's good. I, great book. Great book. I, have, I know. And it confirms so much for me. So that, so it helped me to walk in the level of confidence that I'm walking in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase, right? What's your third word when you hear this phrase? Self-awareness, purpose, and faith. I already had it. Faith. Faith, honey. Faith. Yes. Faith. Faith is seeing it even when, you, when it's not presently there manifested. Faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is going after it even though you don't know how it's going to all play out. Faith mm -hmm. is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Mm -hmm. And the word of God tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and check this out, that he is a rewarder 
of those who diligently seek him. So mm -hmm. faith, that's the word that I add there is that third thing. It is necessary. It is necessary, faith. You've got to have it. And then faith without works is dead. But you got, you got to have the faith in order to be able to do the works. Because if you don't have the faith, then how are you going to move forward with the works? They mm -hmm. go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. But I, I look, I, I'm, I know we're trying to cut this off, but faith. faith. I am a woman of faith. That's how I describe myself. I am a faith walker. I'm a faither. I am a woman of faith. I love that because the self awareness um, and and purpose that's the works and faith that yes. ties it in. Because without that faith piece, you know those two items are dead in water. Girl, yes, thank you so much. You are amazing. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. You are amazing, sis. <laughs> <laughs>